coach me on vowel accent, it's easy. You just have to troll your voice. Talk uh -huh. like this. Yo, what's going on, guys? Jim Daddy 69 blind. here. Holy shit, not even trolling. Skull emoji times seven. What is he even doing, brother? My name is Jules. I'm a Radiant player. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe, considering 80% of you guys are still not subscribed. I do these coaching sessions live, so you're more than welcome to swing by the stream and ask questions. If you're interested in coaching yourself, click the link in the description, click the book a lesson button, and select your plan in time. Lastly, if you want a chance to win free coaching, be sure to comment down below your Discord name and why you think you deserve it. I'll be picking out a person randomly. Other than that, enjoy the video. Okay, so we are coaching a silver today. All right, let's see the buy here. So we have six bullets, one trip. All right, this is probably going to be the buy now. That's going to be, that's going to be. The trip isn't bad. You know, if they do come from showers, though, they could big flank. But you know what? I, I don't mind it. Okay, crosshair placement is head level, but you're not giving yourself room, right? What do I mean by that? Let's look. Look where the crosshair placement is, right? It's literally on the wall. You need to give yourself space. So then when they wide swing, you don't have to correct, right? Look what happens. They wide swing on your screen and you have to correct your crosshair because you're too tight on the angle, right? Always give yourself breathing room when you're holding crosshair at shot level, right? Oh. Damn. Okay. Guys, how many times do I say it? If you win pistol, you full armor, specter buy. If you win pistol, you should go full armor plus specter buy. So the reason why you want to do this is because if they go with like a sheriff or something, you're not going to be one shot headshot. Basically, you're half-assing it, right? You don't Jones, want to half-ass it. Uh, you could go with the marshal, but I'm telling you guys, and you want to be consistent, I would not buy the marshal. I would buy full armor specter. You just cannot go wrong with this gun. You can run and gun. Marshal just requires you to have better positioning and good aim, and you can get punished for it. So with half armor, you're kind of half-assing it, and you're susceptible. So, oh, Lord. Fuck me. Sus susceptible. <laughs> All right. Autocorrect coming in clutch, baby. And you're susceptible to getting one sheriff in the head if they like buy. English lesson up. for me. Valorant lesson for them. Insta reloads. I love you and your content. Hey, Keep I appreciate going, that. W streamer and W Wait community. Dark, we... Thank you. Less than three. All right, couple things here. Actually, Wait out the dart. And then we... Chat, what is wrong with this peak? Everyone pay attention. Everyone pay attention. Wait out the dart. There's three things wrong with this. Let me see if you guys can actually guess all three of them. Shift peak. Okay. Holding W. Okay, yes. Holding W and shift peak. Those are the big ones. Too long angle for the specter. Okay, stay classy, got it. Yes, 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 good stuff. All right, this is a bonus round, okay? What does it mean when it's a bonus round? We have the specter. When we have the specter, we're up against Vandal and specter, you, or Vandal and Phantom. You need to be avoiding long distance fights at all times, right? On top of that, the peaks were bad. You guys were absolutely right. You cannot hold W around corners, especially new corners, and you should not be ship peaking, especially this high impact thing, right? You should be quick peaking. So three big things here, right? Those are the big three so three big mistakes with this peak let's let's rehash this one you were holding w around this corner and peaking angles this is bad because you can't counter strafe and you appear slower on their screen when doing this two you should quick peek high priority angles like this quick peeking is where you take two to three steps without holding shift and you don't make a sound. This requires practice, but that's the gist of it. Three, you are bonusing, and we know they are going to be buying up. So you have the gun disadvantage, which means we should be avoiding long distance fights like this and try to play closer. Basically, like the distance that you travel from here to here is not as big as if you were just holding your strafe, right? If we just go one second in time, but you're holding W on the corner with your strafe key, this is the distance that you went. But if you're just only holding the strafe key, you go even further with the same amount of time. So this is the power of holding strafe keys and counter strafing, right? That's the main reason. How do you peek here with the gun disadvantage? So what you could do, there's a, there's a couple things where you could do. One, I personally would probably tuck here and just wait for the push if he is pushing. And then you take this fight close. So that's that's an option. Another option, you can jiggle peek here and, and see if he's peeking. If he's not peeking, you can actually crawl up here and scale up to this close wall and then hold this angle, right? Basically, you're being very clever with the angles that you're exposed to as you scale up. That's true. You will have money next round. Uh, same peak, same peak, same problem. Your crosshair is ahead of your... But it worked. It was a nice shot. Okay, what was the buy here? 
There's no shot we don't buy here, right? We buy this. We actually 100% buy this. This guy could have went light armor. He could have went light armor vandal instead of buying whatever util he bought. This guy could have definitely bought light armor vandal. This guy buys full armor vandal. And then the only one who couldn't buy would probably be this guy because he would have 3,100. So he would have to go full armor specter. Anyway, if four people can buy, you buy. I noticed like one big thing in silver. People never go light armor vandal. If they can't afford full armor vandal, they just don't buy. If four people can buy light shield plus vandal, then you want to force this round. Also, you want to prioritize Vandal plus Light Armor over Spectre Full Armor. I notice a big problem in, in Silver Gold is that they end up saving too much. For climbing, like the ranks, I, I'm not I'm trying to go pro. Really I don't want to go pro. It's, it sucks up way too much time. What did you say? Nice. Okay. Nice. You can pick up that gun. Uh-huh. You can probably... Yeah, you can... I would peek the CT guy. Yeah. Oh, how do I fuck that up? I'm fucking terrible. Whoa, hey, listen. Don't ever talk to yourself this way, all right? You are goaded. You are the best. Don't be hard on yourself. Listen, everyone, everyone take notes. Would you talk to your best friend this way? If you were playing with your best friend, best friend in the whole world, and you just watched them do this, would you talk to your best friend this way? You wouldn't. You would not. If you would, it would be the troll. Would you actually seriously talk to your best friend that way? Like, if he tried his hardest, and you were like, yo, you're trash. You're so garbage. You know what I mean? Like, if you were being serious, you wouldn't. So why would you talk to yourself this way? You gotta be your best. I, I understand if we were trolling and stuff to your friend, right? But if you were being serious, you're your own best friend. You, so you gotta treat yourself as such. You always think about that next time you give yourself criticism. Would I talk to my best friend this way genuinely? If the answer is no, then about don't talk to yourself that way. A lot of it could be psychological when it comes to improving, learning, games, everything is, right? right <laughs> I have a lot of experience with, with that. Okay, TPs. Make sure you're setting up your TPs. This is like a big thing too, I've noticed. Make sure you're setting up your TPs. I've been seeing this mistake consistently. You want to make sure you always have an escape route to reposition. Then they abuse. Oh, you guys fight this. Nice. Oh, uh, care. Okay. I guess that reload wasn't too bad because Jet was in a wider angle. Uh, but I, I could tell that this is a common mistake where he re reloads out during the animation, right? Okay, slow peeking. Okay, good trade. TPs again, man. Where are the TPs at? I'm sure. Uh, How would land, you land, recommend land. using chamber TPS on attack? So there's not really a clear-cut answer on that. Oh, that was a good try. That was a very good try. It's a good kill. Off this. Oh, oh, we, we definitely rotate off this. Yeah, you guys don't have to push here. Okay, you don't have to push here. This is a 3v2. Oh, 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 oh. Did we just see that real time, baby? Did we just see that getting punished in real time? It's a 3v2, right? When you're in a 3v2, you want to play around the bomb. Even if you have his TPs, I don't, I don't like the play, right? If you did have his TPs, I still wouldn't have liked the play. There's no reason to get aggressive when you're up numbers. Chat, what is the objective for attack side right now? The number one objective, playing time. Exactly. That's the only thing that matters. That should be number one priority. Second priority is killing them. But number one is playing time. And when you have numbers like this, there's zero reason to peek. You give them a window back into the round. You give them one ones that you don't want to take the reason for playing numbers is because if you guys trade off of all of your kills you're gonna still be left alive if you trade off of your teammates that's how playing numbers works playing off of your teammates you guys trade kills surely you win that round with spike down okay but peeking like this you give them a window back into the round so when you're up numbers you play passive when you're down numbers you can play aggressive or even coaching I'm right stuck, I'm, stuck, I'm stuck i'm stuck it saves you time so you don't have to like throw in a ton of variables are you joking me Oh, I think your crosshair again is like a little bit too close to the wall. This reaction time would only work if they jiggle peek you, right? And I don't find them jiggle peeking this angle very often. Also, I'd aim a little bit lower. You want your crosshair to be around here. Every time you're opping, you want to aim around chest level, not head level. So this is like neck level, I think, or like chin. DTP, DTP. Oh, I like the gun upgrade. You know, bomb. TPs. I'm not gonna keep. I'm not gonna keep writing it down. Jared, hey, listen. Two, just play your TPs. Please. I don't think I've seen you use your TPs once. You gotta set your TPs up a lot more. It really helps with repositioning after getting sight. Yeah. Okay. I like this calm. You didn't want to get aggressive. Okay. We don't know. Okay. Chamber Suka. I wouldn't even hold this angle. Your whole team. I don't know. I feel like 
That is a very controversial opinion though. Okay, so with your trips, you want to avoid putting them out in the open uh, like this. You want to put it in cubbies where they're forced to commit to an angle and they can't just shoot it from far away, right? In this instance, they can just shoot it from long for free without having to peek anything, you know? And throwing trips down on defense, you want to place them in spots where they have to commit to an angle to shoot it. In this instance, they can shoot this for free. Want to play? Let's play. And then, uh... Nice TP. Okay. Now, this is good. This is how you should be using your TPs. So this was good. This is how you want to be throwing your TPs, right? Aggressively and going for these early picks and then TPing out, right? And you can do this with a lot of different fit, angles. Fit, so here. this was really good. Grief. That rain of grief. Imagine walk pushing you in a 1v3. Rinse the one shot. This is why... Oh. That's true. This is why you don't play aggressive, right? They just give you, they're just gifting you the round there. So you had an opportunity, but to my coaching sessions, because we are behind by like, here, I, I hate when this happens. I hate when this happens. Here, you're ready to TP even faster, but that's just unfortunate. That's unfortunate. That happens to me all the time. And, the same and... thing. <laughs> How do I die? Then? That was Spoke is down I... short. Unlucky. Up, that's what that is. Oh, good. I like the aggressive play, though. So that's not I'm that the play was wrong. The play was great. That's how you want to be playing on defensive me. side, to be honest. So the biggest flaws that I'm noticing is on your attack side. I think your attack side is sloppy with post plants and stuff. I think your defense... Yeah, nice. All right. So that's, that's your biggest thing right now is... Post plant situations, not using your utility as in your TPs. For mechanic wise, your crosshair is too close to the wall. You need to give yourself more breathing room. You're getting too aggressive when you don't need to. Play more around your teammates, right? In post plant situations, always play around the spike when you have the numbers. Play around taps, all this stuff, right? So, what did Jared do well in the session? So, a couple of things that I really like that you did is your raw aim, right? In general, you have pretty decent aim and your crosshair placement is, is pretty decent for being silver. It could still use a little bit of work, but overall, good. You hit a lot of nice shots because of it. Uh, another thing that I liked is your defensive TPs. You place them in aggressive angles where you want to take these quick peeks, you go for a quick fight, and then you TP out, right? That's exactly what you want to do. Only thing that I would recommend is with your trips, right? Make sure that they're always tucked into a corner, force them to commit to an angle to break them, make sure that they can't just break it for free. Or should Jared spend time practicing before the next session? All right, here's the big one. So the main things that I noticed is with your crosshair placement, you want to give yourself more breathing room from the wall. You you don't have like that instinct, the, the super fast reaction time. You want to give yourself more room to react. Another thing is playing too aggressive on on post plant situations on attack side, right? You have numbers 4v3, no reason to peek, play the spike, play around your teammates. That's number one thing that you always want to do. Another thing is on attack, when you're taking sight, you never throw your TPs down. You need to always throw your TPs down as like a safety net when pushing into a site. So you could always use this to reposition. Right before pushing out of a certain choke point, throw your first TP down. And then after you get in the site, you can always throw your second one down and the TP out to reposition. Another thing is like overheating too sometimes, right? You get one kill and you're always looking for a little bit more. So just be a little bit more careful about that. All right. W. W coaching session. Done, we know me and Chatty and Channel is desolate. You at your peak and you'll never be relevant. Now we got beef and now I'm here to settle it. Channel ain't growing. You might want to pedal it. You are like seven whole years to develop it. I'm way above you.